rappers to gang leaders to top cartel figures. Organized crime is what we call it. Let's get into this video. America has always been fascinated with the mob, kingpins, crime. It's in movies, shows, history, and it's become culture. Crime and scandal from inmates in Alcatraz to John Gotti and Al Capone. But the United States has its own share of homegrown drug kingpins, mob bosses, and gangsters. This is Gangsters of America. Today we're gonna to talk about Frank Nitti. I call him what we call a self-made American gangster. His family moved to the US when he was 12 and Nitti dropped out of school in seventh grade and got to work, did what he had to do to pretty much make. When he made it to Chicago, he started working as a barber and then started fencing. Fencing means pretty much you're the middleman for moving stolen goods. How many people have been there? I've been a middleman many, many times until I decided not to be one. <laughs> we all have been there. In 1920, he joined the Al Capone's gang, the outfit, as a trusted friend from his old neighborhood because him and Capone were actually friends back in New York when they made it to the U.S. He decided to place Nitty in charge of his whole smuggling distribution operation from Canada to Chicago. It was all about the whiskey. Nitty quickly became one of his top lieutenants and was very, very trusted because he was a natural leader. It was always said that Nitty chose to use brains rather than muscle. I think sometimes I use more muscle than brains. <laughs> The nickname, The Enforcer. In 1931, both him and Al Capone were convicted of tax invasion and were sent to prison. Nitty only got 18 months, Capone got 11 years. So when Nitty got home, he took over. Many people say that he was just a front man, that the real boss was Paul the Waiter. On December 1932, a team of dirty Chicago cops raided Nitty's office on LaSalle boulevard and shot him three times but he survived and the cops went to trial and were fired and fined a hundred dollars you believe that i think the cops were actually getting paid 15 grand to take nitty out but they were fired and fined a hundred bucks what a joke but chicago has always been this is what i always say always been a gangster ass city from Cops to politicians to gang leaders to mob figures, you name it. And then they asked, like, why is there such a heavy cartel presence there now? Chicago is what they call a power city, a hub city where there's millions and billions of dollars to be made with everything that comes through there. Boats, planes, trucks, you name it. In 1943, many top bosses were indicted for trying to extort Hollywood, the film industry. I'm telling you, man, these guys were always ahead of their time. The boss blamed Nitty and made him take the fall. After that indictment came in, Nicky started thinking. He read it. He really dreaded the idea of prison. It's, it's like all over like history that he said that. The day before his ske scheduled grand jury, he had breakfast with his wife at his home in Riverside, Illinois. Illinois. <laughs> I remember the Riverside Mall. I used to be a good place. A lot of memories, a lot of fights. He went from a, for a walk on a railroad yard that was down the street from North Riverside, and he put a bullet in his head. A wealthy man and powerful mob boss in Chicago died sitting by himself on a greasy floor branch in North Riverside in 1943. He was 62. Nicky was buried at the same cemetery Al Capone and many mob figures are buried at in Hillside, Illinois. The cemetery contains many, many graves of several Chicago mobsters, a lot of history. If you're ever in Illinois, Make sure you stop and check this place out. You'll be surprised of how many bosses, mob figures, I mean, you name it, are buried there. Hey guys, like I say,
this life leads to two places, prison or the grave. But it's history and it's Chicago history that still needs to be told so it's not forgotten because we are going into this new age where a lot of these millennium kids don't know why we got to where we're at. Hey, don't judge nobody. Stay in your lane. Live savage. Give somebody a hug. And remember, you only have one life to live. So live it free, sober, out with your family, with your loved ones, and be happy. Do the next right thing. I dare you to be wrong and strong, even if it's just for 24 hours, man. I'll catch you guys on the rebound.